This program has been funded by the H. Van American Foundation and Nora Beverages, makers of Naya Spring Water, a proud supporter of intelligent, entertaining, and informative programming on public television. Once upon a time, a TV producer had a dream. If only, if only there was a gay and lesbian TV show. Oh, if only there was a gay and lesbian TV show. Oh. Oh. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm Lambda, the good butcher of the Northeast, your fairy godmother. I know it's a bit of an oxymoron, but nice to meet you. I don't keep any money in the apartment. I'm not here to rob you. What do you want, then? I'm here to make your dream come true. The one about the car? No! The dream you just had. The one about the lesbian and gay TV variety show. It's like Ed Sullivan. Only now he's got four rings in his ear and tight leather pants. Oh, boy. Good night, lady. Good luck. Come on, John. We can bring lesbian and gay culture to the masses. We can be on public television. We can be condemned on the Senate floor. Yeah, right. Look, I have to be up in a couple of hours. And besides, you'd have to be pretty naive to think you could actually get a gay and lesbian TV show on the air. It's impossible. Oh, John, my little skeptic. In the... Hey! 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 In the... Hey! Hey, that was pretty good. Thanks. You know, I did the NBC Peacock, too. Hey, but Lambda, a fancy opening does not a show make. What else you got in there? Three lesbians juggling potluck dishes mm. with their feet? Not a bad idea. I wouldn't know where to start. It's always best to start at the beginning. John, you'd start with a production number, of course. Now concentrate. Picture a hundred men who never made the football team in tuxedos, singing, non-threatening. There's a power in our voices, hopeful and strong. Here's from now, someone out the song. This is non-threatening. John, these guys could sing in the Vatican. One more time. Okay, we got a gay men's course. Now what? How about a lesbian comic? Are there any? Watch! Will you tell me how they covered the earthquake in San Francisco and never mentioned the word gay or lesbian? <laughs> that is good reporting. I mean, they talked to gay men in the Marina District, clearly gay men. They, they talked to this one guy who was like, well, Bob and I were working in this building right here, and the entire building started to come down around our heads. I could not believe it. We'd been in there a couple of days working on the wallpaper. We had it perfectly planned. <laughs> And, and out comes Bob, a queen in shock. He's like, you know. And they never said gay. They never said gay. They talked to lesbians in Santa Cruz. Clearly lesbians in Santa Cruz. They talked to this one woman. She was like, well, we built this friggin' building. So you got one funny lesbian. One? What do you think we're putting on here, John? Clytemnestra? Even the word lesbian is funny. Say with me, John, lesbian. They're funny. And there's funny gay men, too, and we got tons of them. Watch. It's John, I'm always the only big queen on the planet. You know, I've got my Evian water, my moisturizer, you know, and the, and the stewardesses are all laughing at me, you know. And by the end of the fight, they all look like apple dolls. You know, their faces all dried up, and I look beautiful, okay. <laughs> I have to admit that I don't know much about country western. It's not a part of my roots. My idea of country western is eating biscuits in West LA. 
Uh, actually, and here's a tip for you at home. Never come out to your father in a moving vehicle. As I said, a lot of Vito's letters were very funny. Uh, and he might write me something uh, as outrageous and wonderful as, you know, at the rally today, Grace Jones bared her tits to a thousand lesbians <laughs> and saying, I need a man, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> you know, in my day, a man wasn't just gay. He studied to be a queen. <laughs> and it's not just the guys either. I mean, there's a woman, a big, big producer, at one of the studios. She brings her lover to the Christmas party every year, passes her off as a roommate, right? Okay, sure. You're making half a million dollars a year, and you need help paying the rent. <laughs> Uh, Barbara Streisand herself began in the gay community, and I've got three of her records in my own home. I learned to commune with nature. People there love to camp. To this day, I don't understand camping. Maybe it's because I'm from New York. We don't call it camping, we call it homeless. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you are thinking, gosh, not another show on gays and lesbians on television. <laughs> oh, really? You mean this isn't American movie classics? Stop, wait a minute. Production numbers, comics. How are we gonna pay for this? John, gay people are the market of the future. We're like this huge, untapped resource. Go ask Madonna, she'll tell you. Look at the statistics, John. You know, according to Simmons Market Research and Overlooked Opinions, gay people have an individual income far above the US average. They travel more. They have pets, and they buy things, too. Hey, wait a minute. Does this include lesbians? Well, I can tell you that 100% of lesbians have an income at least as high as that of their cats. And we're all at liberty to spend it however we want, at least until we all move like a tidal wave to enlist in the Marines. I'm telling you, John, when word gets out that we're doing this lesbian and gay TV show, sponsors are going to be tripping over each other to get to us. Look! We've scoured the world of adult video to bring you the film that no one has dared to make. Until now. Well, you look pretty good yourself. Thanks. That's adult entertainment. It's the all-talking, uh -huh. G-rated, no-action adult film. It's touching. It's tender. Is it all right if I come over for a while? It's a compilation of great dramatic moments. Who the hell are you people? I'm the delivery man. Hi, I'm Richie. Hi, I'm Kurt. Richie's friend? It's got intrigue. You liar! Liar! Adventure. I've never done this before. Dazzling special effects and death-defying stunts. You'll laugh. You'll cry. It's my birthday, and no one showed up for my party. You won't believe your eyes. Don't miss That's Adult Entertainment, the only adult video you can watch with your parents. Enjoy. Hey, wait. You can't show commercials on public television. Did I say commercials? I'm a little muddled. Public television. We'll do pledge drives, auctions. We'll raise the money ourselves. Car washes, bake sales. And we'll do benefits, lots and lots of benefits. They got them all over the country now, John. So, like I said, let's talk about gay sex. Let's talk about the fact that straight people don't know anything about gay sex. But you know what? Neither do we. When we saw John F. Kennedy Jr. on the street. Uh, we were like two elderly citizens from Brooklyn. We were like, oh. And I think that, uh, as I said last night, that if Ronald Reagan were alive tonight to see this, <laughs> No, this isn't the duplex in New York or Josie's in San Francisco. It's the Triangle Ball, a fundraiser in Washington, D.C. Gay politics has always depended on gay entertainment to get the message out. And to draw a crowd. Lesbian and gay organizations are not only using entertainers to raise money, they are also raising consciousness. What I think we're seeing here in Washington is the 
challenge of the gay and lesbian community to capitalize on our newfound political and media visibility and power and bring in those people, celebrities and entertainers and the shapers of culture in this country to realize that our struggle for civil rights needs their voice and needs their support. Political organizations such as the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and the Human Rights Campaign Fund have always known that empowerment is expensive. That's why they're enlisting big name entertainers, gay and not gay, like Betty, Lily Tomlin and Dionne Warwick to make their dinners and events the hottest tickets in town. There are many, many gay and lesbian performers out there who capture where our movement is and where our movement needs to go in all of its diversity, and that's really important. AIDS organizations are also recruiting movie stars and entertainers to raise money for everything from AIDS research to AIDS awareness. We use gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, and heterosexual entertainers in all kinds of ways. We love the queer ones a lot because we're San Francisco. Novelist Samuel Butler said that humans are the only life form that can laugh and elect a Congress at the same time. And it's a good bet that the comic making us laugh is probably raising the money for a Congress who will keep us smiling. All right, all right, you convinced me. Great, because I hate talking about sordid things like money. What about music? You need more music on this show, John. The tuxedo number wasn't enough. Who else could we get? Who, he asks me. Jen, Jenny, Frank, Tana, Pam, and Debbie. I'm one of the girls. I'm one of the girls. I'm one of the girls. Mr. Sandman, uh, bring me a dream. Uh, please make him gargle and brush with gleam. Give him a lonely heart like Polly Hachi. But not as closeted as Liberace. Mr. Sandman, ah, bring me a ah, ah, Give him a basket of flowers for me. But will that play in Nashville? John, we're everywhere. There are gays in Nashville. Uh-huh. Out in the country. Cross, kick, one, two, three. Cross, kick, one, two, three. Got it? Do you have to be so cheerful? <laughs> <laughs> Spreading our wings wild and free. Do you have any straight people in I your have, band? I have two straight people in the band, but we're not going to out them. Oh, I see. Learning about life from Mother Nature. Let me introduce the members of the band to you. OK, and okay. maybe I'll just guess. OK. <laughs> two and what comes naturally. Some band. And you are some host. What's the matter with you, John? You don't even offer me a cold beverage? You know, with the singing and dancing and talking and showing, you know, I'm a little parched. I was thinking, you know, the entertainment, it's great, fabulous, but life isn't all high kicks and two steps. You're absolutely right, John. You know, no gay or lesbian person living in the United States in the gay 90s amid Homophobia, AIDS, bashing, no civil rights, and Hollywood still packed full of closet cases would say that their lives were all singing and dancing. We need something depressing. I mean, significant, important, consciousness raising. If everybody could see the quilt today and they could see what's happening to people 
and they could see how people are relating to each other and how there's no boundary, there's no person against person divided. It's all one people coming to share in a common experience. We never thought that when gay people came out of the closet that our problems were going to be solved. Our problems were just beginning because our very visibility is what freaks them out the most. This was the scene outside last season's Academy Awards, gay and lesbian anger unleashed. Many saw unsympathetic and misleading portrayals of our community in big feature films like JFK, Basic Instinct, and The Silence of the Lambs. I remember we showed the movie Cruising, and only last year we were showing that movie of Basic Instinct. Oh my, quite a malay. Whether it's a result of the protests, a new consciousness in Hollywood as AIDS continues to devastate the industry, or if other factors are involved, this much is clear. The picture for lesbians and gay men in the movies is getting brighter. So when, whenever we look at these terms, the new gay cinema or whatever, you look at the fact that they're often due to a marketplace. That's why those terms are made, not really the, the reality of the work that, that has existed for years. Uh, if, if there were no gays and lesbians, there would be no Hollywood, and that is just a matter of fact. That's not hyperbole. There will always be people who don't want to see us, but there are people out there who are on our side, whether they're gay or lesbian or straight, and that's what we should be focusing on. You see, we've already had the New Deal president and the Depression president and the Great Society president. Now we have the education president, environmental president, whatever he calls himself. It's time that America had a glamour president. This year, we're making decisions. We're participating. We're part of what's going on in our country. And it's, it's a historic year. Uh, would you appoint any gay people to your cabinet? <laughs> yeah, I don't think gay people are distracting at all. I don't know what, I don't know what Ross was talking about. You bet there's going to be a lot of gay people in my cabinet, in my credenza, in my armoire. There's going to be gay people all over the place. <laughs> this is all very interesting. And beautiful and wonderful. But I'm still not convinced we can pull it off. You know, John, I'm not getting paid enough to deal with all of your negativity. I'm doing this as a benefit. But it won't be easy. Maybe we have enough material to fill one show. But a series? Well, we could always show film clips. Officer, I have killed a man. He's lying before me by the fire, riddled with bullets. Send your men round at once. Afraid. <laughs> Why should I be afraid? To get where I am, I've had to crawl my way up from the gutter. Believe me, the minx paid for. Why should I be afraid of one dead gigolo? What's really wonderful about these new films is that they don't portray gays and lesbians in a stereotypical fashion. I am not a stereotype. That's right. We are not all Nellie Queens get them all riled up into a snit. Um, Professor Lang, do you think maybe we could get on with the show? Well, let's roll the clip, Kim. That was disgusting. But you know, I'm starting to believe we can really get the show on the air. I told you, didn't I tell you? Oh, Lambda, I feel so close, like, like we've bonded. Oh, John, you guys are so theatrical. I like theater. Hey, that's what we forgot, theater. We need some gay and lesbian theater on this show. Wave your wand, Blanche. Ha, huh, quite right. <laughs> Here's Jim. What if she does? <laughs> if Frau von Pussenheimer came in here right now, I would say, I'm so sorry to bother you, Ludmilla. <laughs> so, I guess you know. That Puerto Rican boy in the show is like me. I'm like that. I know, he said. And I like that.
As he reached across the bucket seats, taking a hold of my tear-smeared cheeks to gently place upon my 16-year-old lips one singularly sensational, ooh, sigh kiss. Shut your mouth, go to sleep. Time I met a sailor. Are you sleeping yet or what is what? Wizard, but I can't help but feeling I failed. Let's be scared together. Let's pretend that nothing is awful. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing. Just to stay right here. That was beautiful. Oh, Joe. Oh, Lambda. Enough of this sentimentality. We got a show to put on. Well, there is some good stuff there, but I think it's going to be a production nightmare. So you'll be like every other producer. You'll chew roll aids, you'll go to therapy, and you'll get screwed by the network. That's no reason not to have a show. And because it's a lesbian and gay show, you'll get volunteers to help you. And if you make a mistake or two, so what? You'll just blame somebody else. Yeah. Now all we need is a great act to open up the show. Someone who'll knock America's socks off. John, I have the perfect act for you. I don't want to oversell, but let's just say she's the funniest woman alive. Really? See what you think. Now I know some of you out there have never heard of a women's festival, but just listen, you might learn something. Women's festivals are usually on this piece of gorgeous land where hundreds or thousands of women come together for a few days of lesbian culture. And the first time you go, it's so great. You can't believe you're with all these women. And you know, you start to bask in the sunshine, and you start to sway to the music, and pretty soon you start to feel, oh, so natural. And then you gotta take off those unnatural confining clothes. And then your body's free and loose, and you look to your left, and you see these wonderful naked women and a mountain, and you turn to your right and you see Ms. Webber from the personnel department. Oh, God, Ms. Webber's here. Hi, nice to see you again, Ms. Webber. Oh. Well, we have certainly developed our own lesbian culture at these festivals. I mean, where else can you go and hear over the loudspeaker, booming through the trees? Will running River Schwartz please meet her girlfriend, Oatbran, at the light bondage camp immediately? Now, one of the great things about these festivals is that they're one place where butchers don't have to feel weird in the world. But you know, even in the lesbian community, there are stereotypes about butchers. And you know, when you hear the word butch, usually you think of somebody who like runs off to do martial arts every night, you know, carries six bags of groceries at one time, oh, dike on a bike with a helmet, oh. But not all butchers are like that. Like I'm a butch who failed gym. <laughs> If a femme says to me, would you please check the oil, I can't find a dipstick. <laughs> you know, I bet if I ever make it to the Oprah show, they'll have one of those little identifying titles under me. Butch without a Swiss army knife. <laughs> but you know, as lesbians and gays, we have never in our lives heard ourselves spoken of so much on television as we have since Bill and Hillary Clinton had been in the White House. I mean, the night Clinton was elected, I couldn't believe it. I felt like I had been nauseous for 12 years, and I finally just threw up. <laughs> but you know, now the Clintons are in, and it's fantastic. You know, within days, they're overturning the gag rule on abortion, they're funding fetal tissue research, they're trying to overturn discrimination against gays in the military. What an uproar over that, huh? <laughs> the most apt comment I heard was on this local news program where this woman, they interviewed her on the street, and she goes, you know, I don't understand something. These guys are supposed to travel all over the world, live in trenches, sleep in mud, walk over minefields, but they can't take some guy looking at them? I don't understand. I don't understand either, but it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thank you.
Thank you, Aunt. So was I right? Tell her agent to call me. That means you'll do the show? I'll do the show. Then my work here is done. Oh, don't leave. John, I gotta go. There's a group of lesbians in Northampton dreaming about mounting a retrospective exhibition with their old flannel shirts. They need my help. So, John, I want you to lay back now, relax, and go to sleep. That's right. And when you wake up, all this will have seemed like a lovely dream. <laughs> And John's dream came true. I need a man. No, not the one about the cop. A Republican. I'll do what I can. Give him two legs like Greg Luganus. But make him public about his gayness. Mr. Sandman. Sandman. Won't you believe? Boom, 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 boom. We want a Superman like Christopher Reed. Someone who will make us scream. <laughs> Sandman, bring us, please, please, bring us, Mr. Sandman, bring us a dream, a dream, Mr. Sandman, bring us a bum, 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 b